six in the fourth, so they lose by two in that contest. Russell Wilson, 247 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Taylor Heineke, 223 yards, one touchdown, one interception. So a lot of people had kind of been, um, or a lot of a lot of Seahawks fans had been kind of uh, ragging on Wilson a little bit uh, since coming back from injury. People had been saying, you know, he, he still looks like he's hurt. He obviously isn't 100% yet, you know, things like that. And um, well, he, he did have some good yardage this game. He did put up two touchdowns, so he put a little bit of those fears to rest. But um, overall, I feel like if you just watched his level of play, uh, Russell did not look that great. Um, the, the defense, the Washington defense was really bothering him quite a bit. And he was just having a hard time getting into rhythm a lot of the time. But um, anyway, so we're going to move on to the next week 13 proper game, which is the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and, you know, I've been, I've been like kind of a casual fan of both of these teams this season. I've been, you know, rooting for success for both these teams, the two young and exciting teams. Um, in this matchup, I did predict the Chargers, and the Chargers probably, you know, like if, if they're, they're both like, the Chargers are probably like slightly above the Bengals in my heart, just because of Justin Herbert. And the Chargers do get the victory very, very dominant fashion. Uh, and Justin Herbert looked really good, which I think was good for him because he's had a few bad games uh, recently, uh, especially last week he had a pretty bad game. But this week he bounced back, he looked really solid, and the Chargers end up defeating the Bengals 40 one to 22 Justin Herbert 317 yards three touchdowns one interception Joe Burrow had kind of a rough game uh, 300 yards so that's pretty good but uh, one touchdown two interceptions for Burrow and he only completed 24 of his 40 pass attempts uh, although Burrow did also get a rushing touchdown, so that should be, you know, one passing, one rushing touchdown, two interceptions for Burrow. Uh, Justin Herbert did not get any rushing touchdowns, but the funny thing is, is that the, the Bengals were actually two and a half point favorites this game. Uh, they were at home in Cincinnati. They were two and a half point favorites, uh, but they ended up losing by 19 to the Chargers. And really, it, it, it was kind of just the first and the fourth quarter that killed them. Uh, first quarter was 16-0 in favor of the Chargers. And the fourth quarter was 17-0 in favor of the Chargers. Um, so, I mean, right there, that's, well, that's 20, 33 points. Just combining their first and fourth quarter totals, they beat the Bengals. Even if you disregard everything else they scored in this game. So, you know, to start the game and to end the game, the Bengals, they just weren't clicking. They weren't there. They weren't able to, you know, get it together. But um, good, good win for the Chargers. Gets them back into the W category. Uh, both teams are now 7, 5, and 0. And both teams are in second place in their respective conferences, which is the AFC West for the Chargers and the AFC North for the Bengals. Moving on to the next game, we have the Denver Broncos versus the Kansas City Chiefs. This was a, this was a weird game, but the Chiefs did end up getting the W, so I get another correct prediction there. Um, Weird, weird game. Uh, final score 22 to 9 in favor of the Chiefs. But um, just look at these QB stats Teddy Bridgewater, 257 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Not a good game from Bridgewater. Also 22 of 40 um, passing. Patrick Mahomes, 184 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. So, Patrick Mahomes didn't pass, didn't throw a single passing touchdown, and um, his team still wins the game. Now, the first score of the game is a 
was his one and only touchdown. But yeah, unfortunately for Teddy and the Broncos, one of those two interceptions of his did turn into a pick six. But overall, just kind of a sloppy game here, especially between the two quarterbacks. Um, Holmes was just barely over 500 um, passing. Same with Bridgewater, just barely over 500. Uh, just a <laughs> ugly, ugly game. Um, yeah. Um, the Broncos, they are now 6-6-0. Six, six they are 4th in the AFC West. And the Kansas City Chiefs are 8-4-0. They are 1st. FC West. Alright, going to the next game. The Colts versus the Texans. Hold on. Okay, sorry. I just got like an emergency. I just got an emergency text message. I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything too serious, but it can wait. Um, let's tell the Colts versus the Texans. Uh, I predicted the Texans here. I knew they were going to be bad, but, you know, I thought maybe they could get one here. I wasn't expecting the Colts to be this good. Um, I predicted Houston win, but, uh, I mean, no, it, it was an easy blowout for the Colts. Um, Indianapolis killed them 31 to 0. Jonathan Taylor continues his really, really high level of play. He had two rushing touchdowns this game. Um, so just great from him. And this game was just ugly for the Texans. Really ugly game. I mean, obviously they got shut out. They allowed 31 points. Um, but, I mean, worst of all, Davis Mills. They're cute. 49 yards, 49 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions, and he only went 6 of 14, so he only threw the ball 14 times in a game that the team was down immediately, like, they were down from the first quarter, second quarter, I mean, they're, you know, they, just, they were down immediately, and they only had Davis Mills throw the ball 14 times which obviously, obviously the Texans are not trying to win this game. You know, the tank rolls on. Carson Wentz, 158 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Um, you know, Carson Wentz not having to do too much this game. Uh, basically, you know, they ran all over. They ran all over the, uh, the, uh, the, the Texans. Um, that was, what was their rushing yard? Had more rushing yards. Oh no, 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 Indianapolis did. Excuse me. Um, Indianapolis, two hundred and thirty-eight rushing yards compared to Houston's eighty-four, hundred and fifty-one passing yards. 
surprised this season already, but I'm not 100% sure. Lamar Jackson, 253 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Um, not a great game from him, just kind of so-so. And Ben Roethlisberger, 236 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Um, this was kind of a boring game. Nothing happened in the first quarter. Baltimore goes up in the second. They extend their lead in the third. And going into the fourth quarter, it's 10-3 to Baltimore. So they're like, all right, they're probably going to probably gonna get this. But then Ben Roethlisberger ties it up at the start of the fourth quarter um, with a pass to uh, Deontay Johnson. And then it's 10-10 it's there. Then, you know, Justin Tucker gets the field goal for the Ravens, so it's 13-10. And then, uh, boom, the Pittsburgh field goal, they tie it up. And then um, another best touchdown to Deontay Johnson uh, gets the puts the, the Steelers ahead, and they get a two-point conversion. And then uh, the, the Ravens come down, they score, but not enough. And that is that uh, nineteen to twenty in favor of the Steelers. The Ravens. Eight, four, and zero. They are still first in the AFC North, but the, the, the Patriots are now first in the AFC as a whole. And the Steelers are six, five, and one. They are third in the AFC North. And there was this um, tweet I saw saying that, according to some of Ben Roethlisberger's friends and teammates, uh, it's kind of been leaked that he is going to be retiring after this season. Uh, I've had the writing has kind of been on the wall for a little while. A lot of people thought that he should have retired after last season or perhaps even the season before last. Uh, ben Roethlisberger has definitely been in decline over the last few years. But uh, yeah, so uh, you know, it's still obviously an unsubstantiated rumor at this point, but a lot of people talking about how Ben Roethlisberger, this is going to be his last season in the NFL, and if so, I imagine that final game for him, they're probably going to have a pretty good send-off. Now we move to Hard Rock Stadium, where the New York Giants came in to take on the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the Miami Dolphins, who last week, somebody left a comment on the video saying, don't sleep on the Dolphins. I wasn't sleeping on the Dolphins. I predicted them to win this game. And wouldn't you know it, they did. Miami getting it done at home. 20-9, to they beat the New York Giants. Um, in my opinion, you know, I expected the Giants to have it season this year. I kind of, at the beginning of the season, like when I did my predictions, I think I talked about them, you know, and wanting them to, I expected them to at least be 500, if not slightly above 500. I think those were my exact words, but um, right now they're 4-8-0 and zero after this loss. They're fourth in the NFC East. The Dolphins, after this victory, are 6-7-0. and zero. They are third in the AFC East. Final score, 20-9 in favor of the Miami Dolphins. Um, and Mike Glennon in for the New York Giants. He gets 187 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. And to a deck of Iloa, me on this. I might be misremembering something or I forgot something, but I feel like this might be the best game that Tua has played all year. He had 244 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. I, I can't be certain because I'm not remembering everything. Obviously, there's been a lot of games, um, but I, I feel like Tua, this is the best game he's played so far this year. 
percentage back up, inching back towards the 70% mark, hopefully. Uh, but like I said, Philadelphia does get the W, uh, 33 to 18. Uh, this was in MetLife as well. Um, and I think, what? Well, let me see if I can find the exact quote real quick. Um, of that. I think that might be the first time 
interception. Derek Carr, 249 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. So Derek Carr doing what he can. You know, he's getting the yardage. He's trying to put his team into positions where they can get scores, but they're just unable to convert. Um, they're just unable to convert in the end zone. Touchdown! This game is rushing, but just, just not good enough overall as a team. But um, there was this tweet. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Schefter pointed out um, the Washington football team is on a four-game winning streak. Uh, obviously improving their playoff hopes, but also um, for every win that that Washington gets. With Taylor Heineke in a QB, he gets $125,000. So this four-game win streak for them has gotten Taylor Heineke half a million dollars. Just over the last five weeks. Or the last four weeks, rather. That's absolutely insane. Making, making all sorts of money out there on the field getting those dubs. Sure. 
this rating of 44.2. Still had a better game than Cam Newton last week. <laughs> uh, and this was kind of a, in fact, this was kind of a muted performance for Dak Prescott. Um, he didn't have, a, he didn't have a spectacular game. I mean, he didn't have a bad game, and his team obviously still got the win. But I don't know. Overall, just kind of felt like a, a muted performance from him. And if they did not get that pick six after uh, the passing touchdown at the end of the game, I think they would have lost. Would they have? No, they would have only won by three. They were just won by three. So, uh, not a great game from Dak. Uh, and I feel like if they had, um, I feel like if they had, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now, the QB for the Saints, the starter. Winston wasn't a QB for the Saints. I feel like they could have won this game. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just overrating Jameis because I like him. Arizona versus Chicago. I predicted Arizona to get a W here, and they did. <clears throat> and Kyler Murray did not have to do very much work. Uh, he only threw 15 pass attempts. Those 15 attempts, so super, super low volume for Kyler Murray. Um, he did get one rushing touchdown as well. Actually, excuse me, two rushing touchdowns as well. So four total touchdowns for Kyler Murray this game. Two in the air, two on the ground. No interceptions. <clears throat> Andy Dalton. What is up with my voice right now? My voice is all scratchy. Let me take a sip. Watch 
watch my predictions video, check the tape, because I predicted Detroit to win this game. Detroit, who has not won a single game all season long. I'm going all caps on this one. I'm going all caps on this one. And you know what I'm going to bold it to? Detroit. Detroit gets their first win of the season first win of the season against the Minnesota Vikings who had been playing pretty well and uh, Jared Goff um, just absolutely clutch performance clutch performance from Jared Goff and he gets his first win without Sean McVay as his coach 27 to 29 is the final score for the Lions. And Jared Goff, 296 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Kirk Cousins, 340 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. But that last play, the Vikings were winning. It was 27 to 22 after the Vikings clawed back. It was almost a heartbreaking game. Going into halftime, it was 20 to 6 in favor of the Lions. They were leading 20 to 6. And at the end of the third, it was 15 to 23. The Vikings had clawed back during the third. 15. Thanks. 
sure exactly when the last time he played was, but Adrian Peterson, who is old, who is coming off the couch, who, um, you know, is, oh, what, what do I want to say? Old off the couch coming in as an injury replacement. He gets the touchdown, and I'm trying to see, um,
subscribe.